I want to talk about a really interesting question that's been kind of bothering me. And I had to figure this out in my own mind. And I, I, I invite those of you who are here to, to chime in. And the question is this. I want to thank Kevin, Kevin Craig for having raised this very deep and, and great question, which is, he says, selling has always felt like extortion to me. Kevin is very kind of, he has a, he has a strong sense of ethics and I love it. Um, strong sense of spirituality and ethics as well. So he says, selling has always felt like an extortion to me. Like you will be in pain until you buy. Like you, I'm going to put you into pain. And if you don't spend money with me, then you will continue being in pain. Or if you don't use pain points, like I try not to use pain points in my marketing, you know, that's a separate video. You can watch my video about why I don't use pain points and what do I do instead. Uh, th this this, this punchline is I think of it as more as a caring doctor, diagnosing correctly, don't like, you know, but it's like touching, tapping. Oh, is that the right spot? I want to make sure I'm giving you the right you know, very gently, you know, making sure it's the right, the right spot that I can treat, that I can give the right therapy to. But if you want to talk about, if I don't use pain points, still isn't selling mean? Isn't it like, well, here's, here's, a, I'm dangling a carrot, so either a stick or a carrot, right? Like I'm dangling this wonderful carrot in front of you, like, ooh, so delicious. It's kind of like, I'll, I'll tell you, I have, I have, I have a, I have a neighbor who sends me pictures of his lunch. Okay. It's delicious. Like he's a really good cook. Like what I do is when, when I send pictures of food, I'm like, Hey, I got a lot of food from this, you know, this place when you want to come over with a container, get some, like, that's what I send to my neighbor, but he sends me pictures of his lunch. And then the second picture he sends is the lunch completed. Like that was delicious kind of thing. I'm like, I, <laughs> my wife's like, well, maybe they're not so up on social media etiquette or whatever. But it's like, like, don't do that. I'm like, you're, you're, you're sending me stuff that I can't have. Like, like if you send it to me and says, please come over and get some, then that's one thing. Right. right. So that's an example. Like you're dangling this carrot and say, you can't have it unless you pay me money. And, and a lot of people are in financial pain. I get it. It's like, like, so there's pain involved. Like I want that thing so badly. This, per, this marketer has made it sound so good, but then I have to be in pain because I have to dig into my already empty wallet or low, low bank account to give you the money so I can stop being in pain so I can get your thing. So isn't selling evil? Isn't commerce evil completely, right? This is a wonderful ethical question. And it's because I, I, I love talk thinking about these things and, and I'll, 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 come, I'll come at it with, with two angles, okay? One angle is that at the at one angle is if you want to go go pure ethics and like spirituality, um, there in the world of the soul, okay, there is no commerce as far as I understand it, as far as I believe. Or I'll just say what I believe. Like in in the eternal world where we are all one and and we're all you know connected perfectly in soul, spirit, love, mind, heart you know, beingness, um, where there's unlimited abundance of, of energy and love and creative power, uh, there's no need for commerce. I mean, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, maybe they, they do it for fun or something, but, but it's like, you can get access to everything as much as you want and spend as much time doing it. And you have unlimited resources. So I believe we still have that inkling from that soul world. And so we feel like in this world, it's not fair that there's commerce. Like we should have access to everything. And this is also another, another, this is another related thing is when people say, well, I want to serve these people, but they don't have money. So I should still social justice. I should still serve them because my ancestors, you know, uh, you know, my, my white ancestors or whatever, you know, whatever majority group ancestors uh, trounced on the native people and the, the people of color. So therefore I should, serve the people of color because they were trounced on for my, for my ancestors, it's not fair, right? Like it, it's, it's that inkling. It's that inkling of fairness. Well, if, where does fairness come from? It's come from the soul, soul world. We, we're still, I believe, right? We're still connected to the soul world through this invisible silver cord attachment. And so we still know it. We still know it deeply. And yet here, here we are in this limited world that we're playing some kind of game here in the earth, earth school. 
All right. So that's one perspective. And, and if you want to go fully into that perspective, uh, there is a, there's a blog that's very radical and nobody, it's like you go there, you're like, oh my God, it's called, um, oh my gosh, what's the name? Let me go find it real quick here. All right. So I found it. Um, his name is Daniel Suelo, S-U-E-L-O. There are actually two famous people, at least two famous, three famous people who, who lived without money for several years. Um, the, the original one that was my hero, uh, my spiritual hero is Peace Pilgrim. Peace Pilgrim, if you haven't yet heard her audiobook that's changed my life, it's free online. Search Peace Pilgrim audiobook and you'll find the free audio download of the it's actually her friend's voice. It's not her voice, but her friend's has a beautiful voice and Peace Pilgrim has a beautiful message and kind of they, they collaborated on, on the audiobook. And it was truly astounding. Uh, Peace Pilgrim lived that money for, uh, I think, close to 30 years, okay? Literally, no, okay, you can imagine, homeless, basically. You're going, going from one end of the country, U.S., to another end of the U.S., just helping people. That's all she did and only, only, only took food, never begged also. It's amazing. Never begged, never asked for anything. And just starved until someone gave her something and just helped everybody. Okay, so I say that as a template of she literally tried to live the soul's life as if she was still there in the soul world, right? And most of us are probably not called to that, okay? I don't feel like I'm called, called to that. And some people have actually literally tried and like went back to their parents' home and go after like three days and go, please feed me. I'm, I'm starving. This is not for me. Okay. And then, but Daniel Swallow is another guy who lived for, I think, more than 10 years, okay, without money. In the modern world, I mean, still, Peace Pilgrim was somewhat modern, 80s, 90s, 70s to 90s. Daniel Swallow was in the 2000s that he was living without money. And he, he made a website called Living Without Money that goes very, very deep into the different spiritual, you know, texts and say why there shouldn't be money you know, why usury is evil and all that stuff, right? Like very deep stuff. Like I loved it reading. I'm like, wow, like this kind of, and yet here we are still, right? Like you can enjoy that, those philosophical texts and go, yeah, philosophically, there should be no money and there should be no commerce and, and interest is evil. And look at the Bible, look at this, you know, Buddhist text and look at all that. And this should not be all this. And yet here we are. Okay. Um, so, like I said, I wanted to give it from two perspectives. One is the pure spiritual perspective, and there's a lot of deep philosophical, and yes, maybe we should have revolution or whatever, but yet revolution is often violent, and what does spirituality say about that too, right? It's like there's so much irony and so much so much uh, paradox there, right? You know, it's like you don't want violent revolution. You want a Gandhi or, or um, you know, peace pilgrim type of revolution, which means a lot of a lot of struggle and suffering for the those, or a lot of bodily struggle and suffering for those who are willing to, to 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 do that. Monks in a cave, that kind of situation. And then yet many of us feel more called to the householder life, which is about commerce. So then, how do I ethically treat selling then? in the householder life. Like, am I, am I saying ah, you don't get to join my program unless you pay me? It's true. Uh, that is what I'm saying. You don't get to in enjoy my George. How can you charge for your courses? This isn't, and you could easily click add, accept to my course. And then you could just watch my videos. And what's the big deal? Why are you selling digital bits that can be infinitely duplicated without any additional, not really, you know, without really any additional cost to me. Why? So let me explain. I think of it as, um, I think of it as like the kindergarten teacher saying to the to the child, "You did a good job with your homework. You get to choose either a gold star, or you get to choose a uh, a gold star sticker, or you get to choose to um, to play at recess for you know fifteen minutes longer. Can't have both. You 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 have to choose. Okay, I think of it that way." So essentially, the kindergarten teacher could have gone, done both. You can give a gold star and a you know 15-minute recess or whatever. What's the big deal, right? And yet, the teacher is, uh, two things are, are happening. One is the teacher is, of course, teaching the child to make a choice, choose this or that. And secondly, there is, um, you know, the, 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 the teacher has to run the class. And so not every kid can just go on unlimited recess. You see what I mean? And the gold stars, maybe now it's digital gold stars. 
that so it doesn't cost the teacher any more to give another digital gold star. But still, it's not special. If it's if everyone gets gold stars, then giving that kid a gold star is there's nothing special about it, right? So there's something. There's in other words, resource allocation is the answer. Okay, in this limited world, where in the in the infinite world, the resource allocation is not needed because why, right? But in this limited world, there's something about our souls being here, learning resource, learning economics, learning resource allocation, where it's like, I have a limited time, I have limited money, I have limited energy. I get to select what I'm going to pay attention to for the good of my soul, hopefully. Am I going to buy this course or this course? Which one is better for my soul? Hopefully, you're saying something like that. Am I going to spend money on mainstream marketing and learning all the manipulative stuff? Or am I going to buy George's courses that's better for my soul? No. Um, but that's essentially what it is. Because because even without money, let's even take money out of the equation. What about time? Isn't God mean that God only gives us limited time here? How come God doesn't give us unlimited time? It's like God just so so stingy. How come we only get 80 years? How come, how come some people only got 30 years? Why so stingy, right? Come on. It's again, there's some learning here. You might get 30 years. You might get 80 years. You might get 120 years. But still, fine. If you get 80 years, 120, how come God is so stingy in one day only has 24 hours? I want to take five courses today. Same thing. Whether you're talking money or time, there's still a resource allocation question, which is the question of, guess what? Choice. So I, I won't belabor the point here, but the, ultimately we're ending here. Like ultimately our souls here are learning to choose. Choose to give energy to this or choose to give energy to that or the million other things we choose to give energy to. And that's what time is. And that's what money is. Money is what, well, remember, like I said, the kindergarten teacher who says, hey, hey, Tommy, you, you did a good job. You did well in that homework assignment. You did well in that project. So I'm going to give you the star. Same thing here in this life. You know, it's like you did some work, you earned some money, and now you get to choose with your money what to do. And where does money come from? How, how do you do work to earn money? Well, that's a separate question. But essentially, you do work to earn money because you add value to other people who then decide, you know what, I'm going to spend energy on you. Right? They're making choices. Right, You get to make the choice of what to offer. Do I offer this or do I offer that? I think this one is better for their soul, but they don't understand that yet. So I'm going to offer this, which I think is good for their soul too, but I'm going to couch it in the way that they understand. And then they're going to buy it. And so they spend money with me. Okay, they make a choice. I have money now and I get to choose where to put that money for, for my attention. Hopefully is worthy for the soul. So I hope this is helpful. Um, Again, cut you know, long story short to summarize, in our own marketing, hopefully we're not giving people pain because people are already in pain. Everyone's already in pain in some way. But hopefully we're being a, watch my video about pain points. So we don't use pain points. But we still have to we still have to make make commerce to say, I have this offer and I need money because I live in this world as a householder, not as a monk. I need money. So I'm going to charge money for what I think is worth paying for. What's, what's worth you giving your extra attention to, your a, a, attention and energy in the form of money. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it, okay? And you're going to pay me the money if you choose to. You don't have to. There's many choices you can do with your money. But if you choose to pay me the money, now I'm going to give you what I think is really, really worthwhile for, for, in exchange for your money. And then now that I have money, I'm going to do the same choices as well. Ah, that, that's worth paying money for in this current time. Uh, in this context, so I'm going to pay money for that. And that person is also worth supporting, right? That I talk more about money in other places, but money is not just a transaction. I, I hope we think of money as supporting certain creators, certain you know service providers, certain companies, certain organizations, right? So anyway, I hope this is all helpful. I really look forward to seeing your comments below as well. And um, thank you. Thanks for watching. And I'll add one more thing. Uh, I want to thank uh, Colleen for, for the chat to say, well, maybe God isn't stingy because maybe we get to, if you only get 30 years or three months or whatever, 
in, in this life, well, you get to come back for another one and another one. I mean, that's my belief. That's my personal belief is in the soul world. There's on the, it's like, it's like, even though it's everything feels so scarce and stingy here, this is some kind of a game, some kind of a school for us to learn from that, these limitations, Be, knowing with the safety and the security and the comfort that actually in the real world of our soul, it's unlimited. So this is just a very, very temporary game, very temporary school. And we could come back and play, play more if we want to, right? So hope this helps.